What is up team? Chuck with Traders War Room and I'm back at you with another video. Listen, this is your midweek sit rep and man, did we have a crazy market today and it was actually a little bit slower than I thought it was going to be and we didn't see some drastic dumps going into a Powell speech, which might be good moving forward to closing out the week. But what I need you to do right now is hit that like, share and subscribe button. I need you to come along on the journey with us. Check the description tab, tons of tools and tidbits to make you a more successful trader. End goal has always and forever will be to be better prepared today than we were yesterday. Now, if that sounds good to you and you're ready to rock it with us, all I got to say to you is follow me and let's go to war. All right, TWR wants to remind the viewer that all content on this channel is for entertainment and education purposes only. You are responsible for every decision you make in the stock market. You need to have fun, but you need to use caution and always, always, always go to war. All right, and real quick marketing pitch. We got our next class coming up on Sunday, 19 December at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Definitely check the description because the info sheet with all the links and how to register is right there ready for you. Now invest in yourself, invest in your future, and come take this class with us. You will not regret it, I promise you. All right. So after kind of a dip in the market early on while everyone was waiting for Powell's speech, we ended up closing out pretty strong, green across the board, not too shabby. Here are your movers and shakers. By no surprise, of course, Apple, Spy, the Triple Q, all those were highly regarded in talking points and did fairly well out there today. We also had some big, huge winners and some big, huge losers. Now, remember what I say about the losers, in particular a lot of these especially the ones that significantly drop these are the ones that we may want to start paying attention and looking for those reversals to catch the bounce up sector performance so you know a lot of green out there energy is something that we're going to be focusing on remember we were paying hardcore attention to the financials because they were beat up the past couple weeks financials are starting to turn around but energy energy has been down and out for a while so we're paying attention to some energy we need some good catalysts coming through and i think energy is just waiting to jump Futures are all green, but remember, like I always say with futures, take it with a grain of salt, okay? This is just to get a plan and a strategy moving forward to go attack the market tomorrow. This should not be considered gospel. And here's the big orders by Fidelity customers. Now, notice you can use any other big broker or big bank, and they'll pretty much be the same, but Tesla, Navita, Apple, and TQQ all got a whole bunch of money coming into them. AMC, Roblox, BFRI, Lucid, Techie, and AMD all got some money coming into them as well. All right, so you guys might have heard my kids yelling for me. Well, apparently we have a huge windstorm here where I live at, and my back patio set just flew off and went into the next door neighbor's patio. So I had to go check on that. But I'm back. Let's finish up the video. Top news, U.S. Secretary to tighten insider trading rules, boost money market fund resilience. Now, this could go either way for us, okay? A lot of these insiders, they like to trade on like the off times and they got special deals when they can trade and buy and things of that dark pool, other things like that. So if they tighten these rules, it might be a little bit more transparent so we can see what's going in and out of different stocks and can appropriately you'll gauge our entrance and exits based off of that stuff as well. So we'll have to follow this and see what's going on with this, but definitely good to see the SECs trying to tighten up on some of these insider traders that are going nuts. All right, so Apple delays returns to office indefinitely. Now, this is probably a plus thing because Apple is one of those tech companies that is actually probably, you know, positioned well so that they can do a lot of these remote things and don't really need the office space. And this might be the next revolution that we're seeing, you know, in a economy, in a world as we know it, is where majority of the workers will soon start to be working from home or working from remote places. Now, I'll keep my personal opinions to myself on that one, but I'm interested to see how this particular stock does with that and how other stocks fall on the coattails 
of this particular movement. So it'll be interesting to find out and keep paying attention to this moving forward. All right, and Wall Street ends higher, Fed to end bond purchasing in March. So Wall Street ended sharply higher on Wednesday after the Federal Reserve said it would end its pandemic-era bond repurchasing in March as it exits from the policies enacted at the start of the health crisis. Now, this is a two-day policy meeting that's been going on, and the Fed signaled its inflation target has been met, and its announcement on ending the bond purchase paved the way for three-quarter percentage points interest rate increase by the end of 2022. All right, so we're kicking off the charts with SPY, man. And SPY did exactly what we thought it was going to do, okay? It dipped down past that 78% Fabrizio line, and then we sharply came up to our previous resistance point. Now, can we go above this resistance point, or are we looking for a cool-down period? I don't know. We'll have to see what it does tomorrow. But if we're looking at the indicators, we look as though that our MACD is kind of flat, our money flow is kind of leveling out at a consolidation area and the rsi is at 57 so we got some room to definitely go up we're not oversold we're not overbought so it'll be interesting to see how we open tomorrow man you can hear the wind going nuts over here too yeah so if you guys hear some background noise just know man i can't get away from it this is just the wind we got 85 90 miles an hour rent wind but we're gonna rock through this all right apple man apple is doing its thing again we had a cool down period for two days and we sharply came back up we're approaching that 100 percent line man and some of the naysayers were out there and you know they kept the puts and they made some good money on the puts but we kept our call positions holding strong and we're definitely starting to make back some of that money that was looking like it was being lost earlier in the week so apple to the moon is my opinion and we'll see how it closes out the week all right fedex fedex been my baby this week man and we trimmed a couple times and definitely i pushed a lot of alerts out on the discord to let you guys know if you couldn't ride this out to see how it does in the end you guys should secure your profits on high and some people did that but other people like me we're rolling with a few contracts continue going I like this moving into earnings. We got analysts that saying they're outperforming the market. So I'm expecting a pretty sharp increase and I'm hoping for it as well. Now, if it goes south, then you know, hey, that's just a gamble that you play. That's why we secure profits when we're up, guys. I can't stress that enough. Trim while you're up always so that you hedge your potential loss in the end. But I got FDX bullish on it. Let's close out the week strong. Roblox. Now, here's one I'm actually bearish on, man. I'm not a big bullish person on Roblox right now, at least until I see some signs of reversal. I think we're on a downtrend, and I think it's possible we actually you know, fill in that gap that we had earlier past in November. So definitely, I think Roblox going down, and I'm suggesting puts on this going out into next week. Roku. I'm bullish on Roku. I think we hit the bottom today, and I think we're going to start seeing an increase in an incline. Now, we've definitely been sliding a bit, but I do think Roku is a solid stock worldwide, and I think that, you know, down here is going to probably start generating some automatic triggers going forward, so I wouldn't be surprised to see an extreme buying pressure on Roku going into the market opening tomorrow. All right, and finally, Neil. Okay, I think we hit a bottom. We hit this area twice and we popped back up each time. So I am being bullish on Neil, and I think that we see $32, maybe $33 closing out this week. All right, guys, so here's the trading log. This is what we got going in, finishing up this week. Anything in yellow, I've already sold out of position and alerted that. Anything white is still open, and we're looking to close in the green. So definitely paying attention to these as the market closes and we end this week. All right, and server and group owners, man. If you guys want my bot in your server, DM me for details, man. I would love to put my bot in your server and engage with your team and push out the real-time buy, sell, and news alerts as the stock market rolls on into the new year. Hit me up. Social media links are in the description. Check me out, and let's get to business. All right, bringing back this segment from the past, we're just going to start kicking off again with questions from the front line. And we got a good question, and I got a great answer for you. 
All right, and so our question from the front line comes from Dr. Marcus, and he has a question. Hey, what's the difference between investing in the SPY and the VU? So we're going to dr- break that down for you guys, and we're going to give you an excellent answer on the difference between the SPY and the VU. So here's a breakdown of both the SPY and the VU. VU is on the left, SPY is on the right. Really, you see that there's not much difference whatsoever. Truly, the only big difference between these two ETFs are the expense ratio. The VU is a little cheaper than the SPY. VU's 0.03% and the SPY is 0.09%, but they track the same stocks. They basically move identical and you already saw SPY and I'm gonna put SPY and VU next to each other on today's and you'll see pretty much identical movements. Pretty much identical again, just another example of how similar SPY and VU are. And let's look at the chart real quick. All right, so here's the VU, take a look at it, and then I'm gonna show you the SPY, and you're gonna notice pretty much the same exact movement on the SPY as the VU. So really, honestly, other than that expense ratio, nothing is different between these very subtle changes between each of these ETFs. And there's the SPY, like I said, almost identical. So pay attention to that, really no difference. Get into whichever one that you want, but if you want to own a particular ETF, you don't want to just trade it, but you want to own, the VU has a lower expense ratio per shares owning that ETF. All right, and that's the video, man. I want to thank you guys for coming along with us in the journey and showing loyalty to Traders War Room. Remember, here at Traders War Room, we look at the stock market like it's a war zone. Stocks and sectors are our battles, and we do it together as a team. Attack, conquer, destroy, and we're always, always, always looking for those high-value targets to give you the best bang for your buck. Now, if that sounds good and you're ready to join a true community that wants to grow, learn, and share together with like-minded investors, then all I got to say to you is follow me and let's go to war.